Well, uh, I was just in the middle of cleaning my studio and I thought, you know, I ought to make a YouTube video about this. I've seen on some of my, my glaze mixing videos where people have chastised me, and rightly so, for not wearing a mask. Um, when you work with glaze, when you work with clay ceramics materials, you're working with a dried powder, usually dried clay, dried dust. Uh, the powders themselves can be harmful. You can have things like barium carbonate or you know, lithium carbonate. Um, those are bad if ingested. Uh, but I think in general, the largest, one of the largest risks is silica dust. You get silicosis. I think that's how you say it. It's not called potter's rot, uh, just for fun. I mean, there's a reason it's called potter's rot. Uh, so I think the number one way to combat that is yes, wear a mask uh, when you're mixing clay and glazes, um, especially if you're throwing lots of dust in the air. The reason I don't wear a mask when I'm mixing glazes is when I mix large batches of glaze, I do wear a mask. Um, but often I mix, I put a little water in the bucket first and I mix the, the dust to that. It really doesn't kick up that much. I don't do it on a daily basis. Um, yes, silenosis is a cumulative effect. What it basically is, as far as my understanding, is you've got fine silica dust, and it's so fine that you can't see it, and it can linger in the air, um, hovering there for days. And you can't see it, so you can't detect it, so it's not like you're breathing dusty atmosphere. It feels fine to you, but it's this micro, micro crystalline dust, and it gets inside the brachia of your lungs, the teeny little bitty vessels of your lungs and essentially shreds them. It's like breathing in shards of glass. Um, and over time, obviously that's bad. So you want to avoid that kicking up dust because then it hangs in the air for a long time. So there's a couple things you can do. You can get an air purifier, big, big industrial filters and things like that. Um, wear a mask. <clears throat> I think one of the largest things that I need to be better about doing, really, instead of wearing a mask, is to clean. Uh, at the end of every day, take a half hour and sponge down everything. Wipe down all the clay off the benches, clean the wheel head, mop the floor with wet. Don't ever do it dry, don't sweep. Do everything wet. Um, and I think that will help keep the dust down remarkably. And I think that's probably the single biggest thing you can do to really help, help protect yourself, is just keep a clean studio. And a clean studio also facilitates work. You know, it's hard to work in a cluttered studio. You don't feel very inspired when you see Oh man, before I can make that, I gotta clean off that whole table. But when the table's neat and clean and you've got a nice freshly wedged lump of clay sitting right there and a clean wheel, it just begs to get in there and get your hands dirty. So I think at the end of every day, you gotta clean the studio. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, before I do though, I wanted to make this quick video. I wanted to mention uh, Zef, Jeff Ziemek, Ziemek, whatever, however you say his name. I don't have his book. Uh, the author of What Every Potter Should Know also has a book about uh, basic studio safety that I encourage you to read if you have these kind of concerns. One thing that I think is interesting in that book mentions is that a lot of these hazards, quote unquote, hazards in the, in, in the, uh, for a studio potter have been, I guess, studied and documented in an industrial setting. They, you know, this is people who mix clay daily. Uh, that's the kind of stuff that the data is for. And so it doesn't really apply to a studio potter. Uh, really, there's not been a study done that I know of for studio potters on some of these materials. Uh, how, how dangerous is the risk of silenosis in a small studio setting? Um, these studies haven't been done that I'm aware of. So breathing silica dust is bad. We can agree on that. <clears throat> I don't think any, any amount of it could be good for you. So in general, try to keep the dust down. So with that, I guess I can show you my dirty studio. Maybe I'll do a before and after here. See, I've got cluttered. Everything's covered with clay. You've even got a, draw, a dry, a dry ball of clay down there that fell. I got to deal with. I've got clay bits there. I've got trimming scrap down there. Um, here I have an open bag of clay. That you just tap it, and it stirs up dust. That should be closed up. I've got a. I've got a cluttered work surface here. Um, needs cleaned up, obviously. It's got clay, dried clay on it. My floor is dirty. I've got surfaces like this on my bucket. Should be sponged down. So I've got a lot of work to do. Um, 
So I'm going to get to it. Okay, so I've done a basic sponge down, and you can see it looks a little bit cleaner. It's not perfect, but what in life is. So you can see, you know, you can see my floor, but you can see there's even clay down there still. You know, I could probably mop it again. And that's what cleaning on a daily basis, every time you're in here, does, is you can get all that stuff again and again and again, and really keep the dust down. This hasn't been cleaned for quite a while, so, you know, it's, it's going to take a couple of different cleanings to get all that gone. But it'll improve the dust in the air, the amount of dust in the air, uh, by, by quite a bit.